Welcome to the Adulting Podcast. I'm Zach Peter, a naturally platinum blonde podcaster, author, and sassy self-improvement addict spewing all those burning questions you're too afraid to ask. And I'm Abigail Freyer, an unfiltered boss babe, daylighting as a lifestyle guru, stirring the pot on social issues. We're here to help you look cute, live well, work hard, and stay woke. Together, Together, let's let's conquer conquer adulting. adulting. Welcome back to the Adulting Podcast, everybody. I'm Zach Peter. I'm Abigail Fair. How you doing, boo? How's that that East Coast life going? It's fast and it's I love it. I'm loving it. I'm getting more aggressive by the day. <laughs> I love it. I want you to come back to LA as like a New York East Coast bitch. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited for today's episode. Today's guest was cured by nature. She ditched her prescription meds and broke free into a new reality. Now she's an accomplished musician, author, and CEO of Genetics Organic. Here to share all her wild habits. Please welcome Miss Tara Mackey. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. Broke through to another reality. Hell yes. What an intro. Yes. <laughs> Bugatti lifestyle. <laughs> Oh, you're a true fan. Hell yeah. Love it. That's what I, I was listening to Bugatti like uh, 20 minutes ago. I was like, He's a- oh. <laughs> yes. I was like, yeah, I need me some Tara Mackey in my life. Yeah. I love it. Get your day started. <laughs> the song. You're ready. So before we before we dive deep into it, you have to answer our icebreaker questions. Are you ready? Sorry. No, I'm not ready at all. <laughs> I'm not ready whatsoever. They're not too, you know, they're not too deep. Uh, we're not digging too much in there. Just a little, just a little. So the first one is I can't start my morning without. I can't start my morning without tea. Did you have yours already today? Yeah. Oh yeah. What kind, what, tell me about your tea. What I need to like, I'm taking notes right now, how it can be used. So what tea do you drink in the morning? (laughs) Um, I make what I call enlightened chai. If you Google my name and you Google enlightened chai, I did a recipe on the blog, but essentially it's cacao, ginger, cinnamon, um, and then I throw, oop, I throw some vital proteins, uh, vanilla powder in there and a little bit of maple syrup and some oat milk or macadamia milk. And it's like, ooh, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't do any oh kind God. of, thing. so it's okay. delicious. And it just kind of gets my day started with the cacao and then, yeah, it's anti-inflammatory and it tastes okay. really good. Every time I make it for somebody, they're like, what is this? So. Oh my, it sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so after you have the tea and you know, you go to the gym, what are we doing at the gym? When you go to the gym, what do you do? I miss the gym so much. I know, right? I'm like, I'm asking this question and I'm like, so what do you do when you can't go to the gym? That's really what we're, what dying. we're doing. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah. I have at home equipment. So I put on okay. a making and I work out for <laughs> two hours at home. And I get my guilty pleasure TV in and I get my workout in at the same time. Uh, I normally okay. do it. My husband goes to bed. He goes to bed at like 9 p.m. So I'm like, okay, workout time. So I just like put on a show and, you know, break out my weight ball and like my little weights and my yoga mat and stuff. And I just Love do it. it. And <laughs> without, I just without have to say your husband is so fucking hot. Like, I just need to say that. Like, we just need to give him a moment of appreciation. I mean, you're hot. You obviously attracted, you know, where you're at. But like, I just, we just needed to give him a moment of appreciation. I just had to say. Thank you. He'll appreciate that. He is really like, yeah, I know he is hot. He is. Yeah, he knows. It. She's like, I go to bed with him every night at 9 p.m. Yeah. She's like, oh, 9 p.m. I'll be right there next year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he said that actually encouraged me to start going to the gym because I was like, I used to think, okay, this is really silly, but I used to think that men were either born looking like Adonis's, like, or not. You know, I don't okay. know that like they had to go to the gym and like we'll work in, like do that. Yeah. <laughs> so he was the one that taught me, like, no, my body doesn't actually naturally look like this. Is from years of lifting. You can also go to the gym and make your body look like whatever you want. So. That's why I started going. Um, <laughs> You're like sick. I'm on my way. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one is I feel sexiest when. Ooh, I feel sexiest when I'm natural. When it's just okay. like, no makeup and I'm just like in 
this you know what I mean like literally like black shirt jeans Sexy day. yeah I love it like feel my best yeah and does, does your hair have that natural little wave in it because that's really it, pretty this is what it does this is it's my really favorite. I love that <laughs> it looks like you just like had it dry after like getting out of the beach in Bali yeah. or something <laughs> oh, thank you yeah cool I just, I decided I was gonna stop blow drying it I'm like I'm just gonna rock it you know yeah no it looks great I love your hair too it's so cute it is you know the humidity is helping it flourish right now I (laughs) thank you though (laughs) and then our last uh, icebreaker is I feel most like a boss when I Ooh, I feel most like a boss when I wake up in the morning (laughs) yes you're like I wake up like a boss I love that yeah Zach feels that way I'm a bitch I'm a boss. I'm a bitch. I'm a boss. And I shine like glass. I'm a bitch. I'm a boss. I'm a bitch. I'm a boss. And I shine like glass. Amazing. That song (laughs) needed a moment. (laughs) Thank you for bringing that song back. (laughs) I want to take a quick break to shout out this week's sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Best Fiends. I've made it past the endless desert and into the ominous ocean. I'm ranking in now at level 147, baby. Best Fiends has been one of my favorite escapes lately. It's a mobile puzzle game that's free to download straight to your phone. You don't even need to be on the internet. So I'm telling you right now, you're going to love it. And if you're already playing, then shoot us a DM. Let's swap some tips and chat about how adorable our little fiends are. Right now, my favorite is Dennis, but shh, don't tell the others. Those slugs won't stand a chance. So if you're ready for an adventure, then join me into the world of Minutia for hours of fiendish fun. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Tara, one of the things, because we've known each other for years and we've worked together so many times now, and one of the things that I really love and respect about you is your unique story, which you detailed in your book, Cured by Nature, um, and it's where you treated your mental health issues without prescription meds. You were on them, and it's a very, and you took yourself off of them and went for a more holistic alternative approach, which is very unorthodox and a little controversial for a lot of people. A lot of people don't love your approach, just just a little bit. Um, <laughs> Um, what would you say to people that are struggling right now that maybe don't have access to healthcare or don't know what to do because this is the first time they've really run into these sort of slumps? What would you say to them at home that are struggling with depression or anxiety or just feel like their mental health has taken a big hit right now? Mm. So here's the thing. I, um, I don't have anything against prescription drugs. I was over medicated. I was on 14 drugs by the time I was 24 years old and I was medicated as a child when I was 12. So I didn't have any consent in the medication I was put on. And that's my issue with pharmaceutical medication is that a lot of times it doesn't address the root cause or it started very early when you can't even really say like I was put on medication for bipolar disorder when I was 12 after my mom relapsed on drugs in front of me a few weeks before And it's like, how can you say that a kid is bipolar when they have a tumultuous life? Um, And clearly I've been off drugs now for nine years and it's clear to me now that I never needed them, but that's not to say that people don't need them. Like I don't completely, I don't have anything against pharmaceutical drugs, but I know my mission here is to give people an alternative. So my number one advice to people who are really struggling is to seek help. Now help looks different for everyone. Help can look like therapy. And I think there's um, free therapy platforms online, free hotlines you can reach out to. Um, Therapy does look like medication for some people. There are resources like books like mine that focus on not only the personal development aspect of how I mentally got through all of this shit of going through withdrawal and coming off of drugs for three years, but natural alternatives to the most commonly prescribed pharmaceutical drugs on the market to treat depression and anxiety that maybe they can try first um, if they don't have access to healthcare, if they don't have access to a psychiatrist or a doctor, or they're looking for something more natural, or they're looking to come off of something that's not working, or they are coming off of something that's not working. These are just gentle, natural alternatives that are side effect free that I feel like before you go down that slippery slope of pharmaceutical medication, if you can prevent it at all, 
here are your tools. And I, I just know that that's why I was put on this earth. It's not to say anything is bad. It's to just say, this also works and is good. And I'm, I've been the personal guinea pig for that in my own life. I'm not saying that because I read it in a book somewhere. I'm saying it because it's my right. personal experience. And um, people just need to know because most people, when they know they have a natural alternative, will do that first. First, right, right, right. And I With love that natural... you even, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just want to make We always do that to each other. We always do no, that. You're fine. But I just want to know on that, on what you were saying, Tara, you, one thing that I learned from you, and I think it was one of the panels that we did together, was that there is a natural derivative to every pharmaceutical that we have on the market today, correct? The one, that's why they exist is because you can't patent the plant. And so they figured out that the plant could do something that they can't patent. And so they made a synthetic version of it. I'll give you an example, like valerian, which is a natural plant extract um, that cures anxiety. Well, they can't patent that. So they made Valium. And oftentimes they'll name them very similar things. So the natural derivative that they kind of like made the synthetic version of, but it's like, if I knew about valerian before I was put on Valium, my life would have been completely different because the first time I drank valerian tea, I like my insomnia went away. My anxiety was like gone. You know, I slept through the night for the first time in a really long time, like no nightmares, like good dreams, didn't feel groggy when I woke up, like didn't need weed, wow. didn't need to drink alcohol. Like it was life changing. And to know that it's giving you actual rest, it's not just like doing what a lot of these sleeping pills do, it's just shut your brain off and black you out and not give you the REM sleep that you actually need. Like people need to know about this, you know? So um, yeah, I there's agree. a alternative for every single pharmaceutical drug on the market. So with the, the natural alternatives, do those work um, as quickly or is that something where you need to give yourself like, plan on like two weeks of letting your body um, take in the nutrients to give you a result or how does that work? It depends great on question. what they are, but that is a great question. And it depends on what they are, but it's not like the, so we've been programmed to think it's going to take two weeks because that's how long antidepressants take and whatnot. Well, okay. antidepressants don't necessarily take two weeks to work. The reason I tell you that is because you need to build up the habit of taking the pill for two weeks to feel like it's working mm. and okay. it doesn't do anything different two weeks in than it did the first time you took it necessarily. It's just, you've now built up this habit and this idea that I'm taking this every day. And so therefore it's- So I'll be happy because I'm taking it. Okay. Okay. Um, wow. And so with most, um, with most natural alternatives, they- do and can and have worked overnight. Like the first time I took dim for my skin, like, thank you for like, anytime I get a compliment on my skin, I'm just like, I literally say a little prayer of gratitude inside because my skin naturally, if I was not taking any supplements has cystic acne, like boils of cystic acne all over my face and my shoulders and my arms and I have psoriasis on my legs. Wow. And like, that's how my body naturally is. And I take mm -hmm. these supplements and I have perfect skin and I don't have psoriasis. And like, I've figured out how to balance my estrogen levels and my hormone levels and things inside that were causing all of this that okay. I tried to do in the past with acne medications and Accutane and birth control. And it's like, I could just take this one estrogen metabolizer and I'm good. You know, what's it you called know? again? Dim. Zim. Dim. D I M. Dim. D I M. Yeah. It's funny. I have yeah. friends that are like, Oh, I have this cystic acne and I have to go in for injections every week and all this stuff. I'm like, why don't you just like try it's, it's hard because not everybody is ready to take that step. Not everybody is ready to, you know, put the power into right. their own right. hands, which I think is like the biggest step is you have to be willing to like have some sort of accountability for your own life and autonomy over your own health. And I think it's easier to trust the pharmacist. It's easier to, you know, put it into, I think our country is built. I was, it got in this really heated discussion with a friend last night about how our country is just so 
built on um, quick fixes and pills and, you know, just a quick shot to to cure, to in, you know, in, in our heads, just cure it when it's like it's just putting a Band-Aid over a bigger issue. And then you run into the case where, like you, you, oh, you then become over-medicated where you're taking so many different drugs and, you know, you lose track of who you are, which is unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it kills people, you know, taking that many drugs could kill could have killed me, you know, and almost did many times my kidneys were shutting down like, there's no way a 110 pound person should be on 14 different pharmaceutical drugs every day. There's no way. And I don't know how any doctor, never mind all the doctors that got me on all those drugs, looked at all the other drugs I was on and was like, you know, what's the other more, right? More drugs. (laughs) Like, it's crazy. now, are are um, the, al- the alternatives are they similar to like where Zach and I might need a different um, a different supplement for the same issue? Like if we both have anxiety, would the same thing be pers- like you would recommend for both of us to use, or, or does it vary by person? Or or like you said for your skin, is that is BIM good for everyone to take, or like how how do you know that? Everybody's- Obviously. Everybody's- you do have education in it, but for the average person. Yeah, no, everything okay. is good for everyone to take. Like when people ask me what to take for anxiety or insomnia or whatever, I normally only recommend two or three things because okay. one of those two or three things is going to help. Like if it's not helping, you're not taking enough of it, essentially. Okay. You know, like when I first started DIM, I took, um, it recommended two in the back and I saw small improvements. And then I was like, what happens if I take four? So I took Mm -hmm. four and then I saw results overnight, literally overnight. I woke up and like, you know, because I would wake up with new acne pretty much every single day. So it went from waking up with no new acne to acne literally just like disappearing to stuff shrinking to like just one day it was gone. And now the same supplement that I take then says if you are um, more testosterone dominant so even for males, for example, if they, if you want to take DIM for your skin, take more because it's an estrogen metabolizer. So apparently I'm more testosterone dominant. So I, I need to take more for it to do what it was supposed to do, which is okay. it doesn't like give you more or less estrogen. It just balances out what's going on in there is like the best way I can describe it. So, and you, the thing I love about supplements is you can't like overdo it. I mean, don't take a bottle of anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. But like, you, yeah. It's not like with Valium or something where like you take four and you're like actually fucking can't breathe, you know? So. Right. Right. I love that. Wow. I, I love that you love that. are brave enough to propose an alternate, you know, you see people like Dr. Kelly Brogan. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but I see people like her who come out having inc- like ha- her book is incredible. And we've had her on the show before and probably one of my favorite interviews in all six seasons that we've done this show, just because I remember sitting in the studio when we were taping it and just feeling like, and I, I got like a little emotional in, in part of the interview, not on microphone, but just internally, because I realized like, holy shit, they're like, we're having conversations on this show that other shows aren't brave enough to have. They're giving people alternate approaches to taking control of their lives, you know, reclaiming their lives and I think that's one of the things I love about doing this show is we are brave enough to have those conversations and get some of the pushback that we've gotten and that's why you know I have a lot of respect for you for doing that same thing and turning your life around and now you have all these little bops and now you have two books out yeah I just live in the dream you know and like growing up the way that I did with you know parents who were alcoholics and drug addicts and my grandparents getting custody of me and like, you know, growing up on all these drugs. It was just like, I, you know, I grew, I was on welfare until I was in my twenties, you know, I was on food stamps while I was writing my first book. And I think that's just really important for people to remember is like, you can turn your life around literally overnight, like, because it has to start somewhere. And so there will be one day that you look back on that you go, that was the day where I started and it's never ever too late to start people told me like oh if I don't sign a record deal by the time I'm 25 I should just give up and never make music and it's like my first EP came out when I was 32 nobody gives a fuck Lizzo just won a Grammy she's 32 her first Grammy it's like they used to tell you you couldn't even be in the industry unless you were in your 20s right and so I feel like it's our responsibility to represent what people think is the norm because it's only the norm because that's what people have done so far like once you 
start doing your shit, you can change what people expect of themselves. Break out of that. So we talked a lot about mental health, which is also which is like a really big part of um, the the information that you put out there. But one of the other things you really talk a lot about or put a, put out in your content a lot is boobs. So I don't have boobs, but I know Abigail has a lot of questions about boobs and some of the the, the oil enhancements that you're putting on your boobs these days. Oh, this one, yeah, yeah, <laughs> look at never too I'm far. Like, this is- <laughs> First of all, who doesn't want them to be a little bit more perky, right? So, I question one, right? Bra or no bra? What's recommended? I don't ever wear bras unless I'm, like, wearing a sports bra to work out. Is that healthy? Is that not healthy? No bra. I like no bra. No bra. bra. No bra. Uh, oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm already at an advantage because I'm not wearing a bra right now. <laughs> You're on trend. <laughs> I have literally had people say that using this oil, which has made them take off their bra earlier at different times than they normally would, has made them realize that their the restriction of their bra was giving them like like heart palpitations to the point where they were about to go get like EKG scans and stuff. And then they realized, oh no, it's always been actually when I put my bra on. It's like related to my bra. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, now, no. With- Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I was gonna say not only the fact of like, you know, just the they're literally constricting. It's like these were right. clearly That's why I hate them. These were clearly not invented by women. <laughs> so right. cool. every time I put a bra on, feels like I'm just like saying what's up to the patriarchy, you know? <laughs> right, right. Wait, I have a question. So uh, maybe this is a dumb question. Look, one, I'm blonde and two, I'm a dude. But, you know, when it comes to boobs, I feel like it, not wearing a bra, doesn't that make your boobs droopy or saggy? Or am I like totally anti-feminist and like sexist right now? What makes people's boobs saggy is the fact that we don't have a boob routine. Like we don't love on our breasts. If you were to mm. pass your breasts every single night, the way that we encourage people to do with our products, your breasts would not sag. It's the fact that we're just ignoring them and we're, or we're using them then just for breastfeeding and we're not doing anything. It's like not going to the gym. Like, how do you expect to like, like anything? And it's literally muscles. Your muscles are there. So it's literally like your whole right. life, you're not paying any attention to this muscle group. And then we expect that they're going to just look like when we were 22, like, they're not. There's like we have to right. love on them. And so my whole goal with genetics is to remind women, I mean, we have our enhancement oil now, but our next product, which is launching in the next few weeks, is a breast care oil. And it's for everyone because like my whole purpose right now is to normalize breast care. Because so okay. many women don't even think about it, you know? Right. And the number one cosmetic surgery that women are getting are implants and the right you know, the top five now are explants because they're not, it's not yes. for you. Right. <laughs> so, right. You're literally putting plastic fluid in your body. Like what? what? Your body, what? And you're cutting yourself open to do that. And I also think that's why many more women are getting breast cancers and things, because the second you cut the body open, you expose it to everything that's in the air, all the toxins, all the stuff that like without that elective surgery you got, your body in that area would never be exposed to. So there's so many parts of it of like, I just want to get this in people's hands so they know once again, they have an alternative to getting implants. I mean, listen, it's not going to take you to like a triple D from an A. So the, it's not for the people who want big fake boobs. Like but it's right. if you want perkier, bigger boobs, if you want to grow a cup size or two, that's what I invented it for. And I invented it for myself first. I shared it as a blog post and it went viral and people asked me to make it into a product. I was just sharing it as a DIY. This is how I made it. This is what it did. And um, now we have thousands and thousands of customer testimonials and photos and just like very, very satisfied women. And it's touched people in ways I could never have dreamed of women who've had mastectomies, you know, and women who've had explants and don't know what the next step is women who have uneven boobs, which I never thought of, but like is the most common right. thing ever of like one boobs larger than the other. And it's always been an insecurity and they want to even one out like, okay, we'll use this on your smaller boob. Done. Okay. Cool. You're good. Now, is, 
is the is the result more based in the oil or in the massage technique that you show people how to use or is it both or is it one or the other what explain those it's a combination of can both. you explain those <laughs> it's, it's okay a combination of both so like if you just slap okay. the oil on and didn't do anything you know we also want to encourage self-examination because like there's just really no company that's out there encouraging that and i think that you know women with the rate of breast cancer that's happening like really need to be aware of what's going right. on here if we never right. touch it and we never or we only touch it sexually and we don't really get in touch with our own bodies like we're doing ourselves a grave disservice sure. there as well it's so crazy how we look at taking care of like we can look at um cellulite on our thighs and want to put a, a lotion or a massage or you know do one of those fascia fat you know busters and we can pay attention to the thighs but when it comes to boobs we've so sexualized them that like it's taboo to right. even you know even think about that and i just feel like we're now in we're like re in that that revolution of burning the bras and like really kind of embracing the boobs and like your your techniques and your oils are are making a lot of women happy but I also have to say they're making a lot of men happy too Tara a lot of men are very happy with the results I can tell you my husband was pretty happy <laughs> he's also happy that this is like my job you know what I mean he's just like, right. he's like oh, so you can massage your boobs today or what <laughs> <laughs> so I massage my boobs in front of him every night or I make him do it like what's the word oh. when he goes to that yeah right Okay, that is like a great tip for like a couples, like boob massages. You need to do that. like a, a a tutorial on like couples boob massages because the men will yeah. love it, the women will love it. Well, I don't know. I guess the, I think I sounds like a great time. I need to find myself some boobs. I'm about to switch time. teams. <laughs> hey, it's fun. <laughs> I even loved using the oil, um, the the genetics oil. What is it? The act, the brightening or activating? The uh, glow brightening serum. Yes, I remember yeah. using that one, and it works so well on your face. Like my skin was so my skin's a little rough in quarantine because I have been eating a little more carbs and having a little extra martinis more than I normally do. Um, but I loved the results that it actually had on my skin. What is the formulation that you put into your products that has such great results? One of the top ingredients is hyaluronic acid, which we all know. That's like, like mm. our favorite. Abigail got me hooked on that. Yeah. So it's the third ingredient. It's like the oils that it's made up of. And like the first active ingredient is hyaluronic acid. The fourth is melatonin, which a lot of people don't realize. Okay. People use really? it. Really? Yeah. But the thing about melatonin is it balances out your circadian rhythms. And your circadian rhythms are actually what's responsible for aging. Not all the other shit we're told is responsible for aging. It's literally our circadian rhythms. They proved this in a study with mice where, or actually a white tooth shrew, um, <laughs> where that has a 12 month lifespan. And they gave the melatonin at the end of their lifespan and the shrews that should have looked like they were about to die looked like they were about three months old. Which, in relation to their lifespan, that's like being in your 70s and looking like you're in your 20s. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I was like, why is this not in every skincare? And a lot like what we're doing with, with breasts, when I first came out with this concept in this melatonin-based skincare, I remember talking to the editor at Women's Health about it. And she was like, I've never heard of any other brand doing this. Like, why is no one else doing this? And I'm because I was like, because no other biologists are formulating skincare. Like, I know about this from my background of... Mm -hmm being a biologist, like back in the day, day before this life, you know, <laughs> and if I see something that like, how could you not put that in your skincare? How could you read that study and not put it in your skincare? And so, and most of the, the ingredients that are in my skincare are in my books too, olive oil, like um, turmeric, ginger, like there's so many ingredients I've used in the skincare that is, has changed my life that I've taken internally for the last nine years. So my little way to share wow. the world. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for sharing. Of course. Are there any other um, like tips or tricks that you have for us while we're all kind of mostly stuck at home? I know depending on where in the country you are, some of us are working, some of us aren't working, some of us are working from home. So I feel like our 
our interpersonal relationships with ourselves and other people are kind of taking a hit. Our mental health is kind of taking a hit. We're in this like weird limbo space. Are there any things that you found that were really helpful, whether they're supplements or just kind of mindfulness practices that you've been able to really kind of put to heart? Yes. So one, my second book, Wild Habits, has just like lists of great habits to do to kind of get you out of a funk um, if you're looking for like a listicle of this stuff because I'll only probably be able to come up with a few (laughs) but I know at one point in my life I wrote a bunch Um, but what Mm -hmm. I have been doing the most of in quarantine to keep my sanity is um, going on walks every day I would recommend you get out of the house every single day and go into nature somewhere like even if you're in New York City go to Central Park, like go somewhere where you feel like you can turn everything off because I was in New York okay. for years, Abigail, and I remember the feeling of being like, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> like all the secret corners I used to know of are like, there's just people there now. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I remember, and I used to always just go to Bryant Park or go to Central Park, even though Bryant Park's not really a park, especially in the summer. There's a shit ton of people there, but I would always just find like my own little corner and like just zone out. So. Okay. Nature walk, number one. Um, reading, I'm doing a lot of reading because um, I'm writing my third book and it just feels like I should be reading a lot right now. And that's really helping because it's kind of like, kind of like takes you out of it, you know? Like mm-hmm. you go live in whatever the book world is at the moment. So um, journaling, I've been journaling a lot. That's really been helping. I've been journaling like every day. I've been meditating every single day. Um, that's really been helping. And I've been going on just like really local road trips. Like I went out got an Airbnb and Joshua Tree with just for me and my dog just for like a week and went out there and then came home and then did that again for another week and like just met a friend in Palm Springs yesterday for 24 hours like just getting out any way that I kind of can um that's safe and you know isn't gonna put anybody at risk (laughs) it's just me and my dog (laughs) you're like "Ah, we're fine (laughs) get out of that so yeah I think being stuck in a routine that feels like Groundhog Day is what's really yeah. like everyone feeling like they're going insane and so anything that can break you out of a routine where it feels like Groundhog Day is what I would recommend yeah yeah Abigail what would you say would be your biggest takeaway from this week's episode I think that it would be that the natural supplements um that there I did not know that there's like a natural like base to every like pharmaceutical that you could just go back in and have the natural form of something. Um, and I think also too, I didn't know that it didn't take like two weeks for things to start working and that it's more of like a mind game. So I think I've learned like a lot on that end. And then also rub your tit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love it. <laughs> I think my biggest takeaways are one, I mean, I've known this for years, but I love that we've continued to kind of push this boundary that like you don't, there's not one way to find treatment, so to speak, whether it's mental health or whether it's an autoimmune condition, like there are always alternatives out there and it really depends on where you're at in your own journey. And and if whatever you're doing right now isn't working for you, there's going to be another approach that's out there. It's not going to be, you know, what, what, what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work the same way for everybody, but it's about going out there and doing the trial and error and putting the work in and trying to like figure out what's going to work for me and what's going to make me feel fulfilled and empowered in my life. I think that's the biggest thing. People are afraid of their own potential, but it's out there and you just have to be willing to harness it. So, um, yeah, there are plenty of alternatives out there. So take advantage of them. Um, show your boobs some love. And I think my last biggest takeaway is that I need to find myself a husband that's willing to rub my boobs. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I love it. Tara, where can oh, people man. where can people check out uh genetics organic and buy your books and follow you and listen to your music? Plug yourself out. Uh, amazing. They can Google me, uh Tara Mackey. They can find me uh on geneticsorganic.com. They can find me at Tara A. Mackey on Instagram and they can buy my books wherever books are sold. Yay, on Amazon right now. Yeah, on Amazon right now. Burns no ball if you're there listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to the Adulting Podcast. I'm Zach Peter. You can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. And I'm Abigail Frey. You can follow me at Abigail double underscore AF. 
Don't forget to follow at the Adulting Podcast for all the latest show news. Go to theadultingpodcast.com. Sign up for our newsletters so you're always in the know. Um, and get ready. we got a lot more episodes to come this season. It's going to be a good season, so get ready for it. It's going to be a great season. Please give us a five-star review because we love that validation. Okay? <laughs> Abigail and I are from Los Angeles. We love that validation. We need it. We need it. (laughs) All right. Thank you guys. Until next time, we'll be busy. Hashtag adulting. Yay.